God protects Jeremiah. In our last story, we learned about King Zedekiah's stubbornness against the Babylonians. He fought against them despite Jeremiah's warnings. Jeremiah continued to warn people that fighting against Babylon was a vain attempt, like grasping at air. Those warnings got Jeremiah beaten and thrown into prison. Now Jeremiah remains in the courthouse as a captive and watches as the Chaldeans and Babylonians pick apart Judah piece by piece. In this story, we watch the demise of Judah through the eyes of Jeremiah. The old prophet is beaten, stripped of wealth, and thrown into mud by his own people. It would be foreigners and enemies that show him kindness, inspired by the book of Jeremiah. Hello, I'm Pastor Jack Graham with today's episode of the Bible in a Year podcast. Thanks for joining us. In our last episode, we saw a desperate but still prideful king, Zedekiah, seeking good news from Jeremiah. He was holding out hope that Judah could hold off the Babylonian onslaught and drive them out of the land. But Jeremiah was not in the business of telling people what they wanted to hear. He was God's man, God's messenger, even if the message was one of judgment he delivered. This cost Jeremiah, including scorn and beatings from those who opposed him. Still, devastation was coming from the Chaldeans. And today, we'll hear of the things Jeremiah experienced as Judah crumbled. God will call him to sacrifice his own wealth and freedom for the sake of others. And through it all, the Lord will be with him, protecting his prophet and using him to tell a story of ultimate redemption. So, let's listen today to God's Word. The prophet Jeremiah had been shut up in the courthouse of Zedekiah for a long while. During that time, King Nebuchadnezzar began his second wind of attacks against Judah. The Chaldeans broke down the walls and burned the city streets, and Nebuchadnezzar waltzed in without struggle. The land was large. It would take the Babylonians weeks to reach Jerusalem. There was a sense of urgency in King Zedekiah as he rallied more men to fight. He fought against Nebuchadnezzar and the Chaldeans despite Jeremiah's warnings. One day, Jeremiah was praying in a solitary part of the courthouse. God whispered to him as he once did to Elijah. In that still and quiet voice, the Lord made his will known to the prophet. Your uncle Hanamel will visit you in desperation. He will want to sell you his land in Anathoth. Jeremiah's eyes widened at the words of the Lord. Anathoth was already under siege from Babylon. Any land his uncle would want to sell him would be utterly worthless. It was the Lord's intention for Jeremiah to use his money to redeem his uncle and save him in hard times. Sure enough, the next day Hanamel came to visit his nephew at the courthouse. He begged Jeremiah to buy the land off him. He said that he desired for the land to stay in the family. However, Jeremiah knew it was because the Babylonians had taken it, and the land was of no use to anyone now. Buying the land would be relieving his uncle of a burden. Jeremiah knew that the Lord had called him to this. So he bought the land and gave the deed to his friend Baruch for safekeeping. The deed would be an image of future redemption. To own that land would mean certain Babylonian slavery. So Jeremiah redeemed his uncle so he could be free. This is what the Lord would do for his people. He would pay the price of slavery so that his loved ones might live free. Jeremiah rejoiced in the Lord, but continued to feel sorrow in his heart for Judah's fate. Days passed, and the siege of Babylon continued. Jeremiah went to the roof of the courthouse. He could see the horrors of the Chaldeans in the distance. They had destroyed most of the walls of Jerusalem. Zedekiah and his men had destroyed a few of the homes to create a makeshift wall to keep the Chaldeans out. When that didn't work, they stacked on dead bodies to turn away the enemy. God saw this, and his heart broke. The blighted wind came in from the north, and Jeremiah began to sob. The Lord spoke to him again, saying, I am the Lord who has made the earth. I will restore this city once again. I will heal them and reveal my goodness. The Lord's words touched Jeremiah's heart as he looked upon the ashy city below. How could God fix this? Jeremiah must have thought. 
I will cleanse my people from the guilt of their sins. I will forgive them and wash them clean. After this destruction, there shall again be the sound of wedding bells, the voice of a groom singing over his bride. All shall be made whole again, God declared. This was another image of what God would do in his people. Hundreds of years from then, a new king would arise and walk the streets of Jerusalem. He would enter and wash the people white as snow. Jeremiah continued to do his best to warn the people of Judah as they passed by the courthouse. He told them they had a choice, remain in Judah and be made captives, or flee to the Chaldeans and be spared. Jeremiah's words were like poison to the men trying to fight. The princes and commanders marched to the king and said, You cannot let this man live. His words are quenching the fire of our soldiers. Every time they hear him speak, they lose more hope for victory. I agree, King Zedekiah replied. Do as you wish with him. My hands are clean of it. The king's answer only partially pleased the princes, for they desired Jeremiah dead, but did not want his blood on their hands. Jeremiah was praying to the Lord in his room when he heard the door creak open. He turned around and saw the princes and some guards with clubs and ropes. More beatings. Jeremiah had become accustomed to them by now. He had come to expect brutality over kindness. The men beat him and bound him. Jeremiah's bruised and bloody body was dragged through the courtyard towards an old cistern. It was deep and no longer flowing with water. However, it was filled with mud and moss. Jeremiah was let down into the cistern on ropes. His feet touched the mud below, and he tried to find steady footing. He sank. The mud consumed him, and darkness enveloped him. Ebed the Ethiopian eunuch was strolling around the courtyard when he heard the snickering of passing walkers. It came to his attention that Jeremiah was tossed into the muddy cistern to rot, with no food or water. He immediately went to the king and said, This is truly evil. Jeremiah is a man of God and was left in that well to starve. Give me permission to fish him out before judgment falls on all of us. The king gave his passive permission, and immediately Ebed gathered thirty men to tie clothing together to make a rope. Ebed brought the makeshift rope and his men down to the cistern. He peered down to see Jeremiah's motionless body consumed by the mud. We are going to rescue you, he shouted. When the rope comes down, tie it under your arms. Jeremiah was barely conscious. He had gone days without food or water and was beginning to think he would die there in that cistern. He was pulled out and given a little food to eat and water to drink. Not much could be spared since Judah was still in decline. Jeremiah remained in the courthouse, recovering from his near-death experience in the cistern. He was quiet of late and filled with contemplation. The prophet was about to go to sleep when his door opened. He had been summoned to meet King Zedekiah. Jeremiah was escorted out of the courthouse. He walked next to the guard past the palace. He had thought he would meet the king in the palace as usual. However, they were making their way towards the temple. It was late, and the distant sound of war had subsided for the night. All that remained was the silent crackling of fire and the moving breeze. Jeremiah saw King Zedekiah sitting at the steps of the third gate of the temple. He approached the king. There was silence for a moment as the king looked blankly into the distance. There was a crack in his normally impassive and expressionless face. Zedekiah sighed. I will ask you this one question, the king said, still looking blankly into nothing. Hide nothing from me. I only want the truth. The truth usually gets me beaten or worse, Jeremiah replied. The king looked at Jeremiah somberly. I swear you will not be harmed, nor will I deliver you back into the hands of those who want you dead. The king paused. He looked like a defeated man, a weary man. What will come of us? Zedekiah asked. There were cracks in his voice as he spoke. Jeremiah sat beside the king, looking into the nothingness next to him. If you surrender, your life will be spared. The city won't be burned to the ground. You and your house shall live, he explained. But if you do not surrender and you continue fighting, many more will die. 
this city will be reduced to ashes. I fear that if I surrender, I will be given over to the men who deserted Judah to be with the Chaldeans. They are not happy with me and will kill me, the king confessed. Jeremiah shook his head. You won't be given to them. Heed God's warnings now, and the Lord will deal well with you. Refuse, and all your house will be captive to Babylon, he said with a pleading tone. Zedekiah rose up from the temple steps and began to walk away. He paused and turned to Jeremiah, saying, Do not speak of our conversation tonight, and I will let you live. So Jeremiah remained in the courthouse as the city was preached. Jeremiah woke up to the earth shaking beneath him. The Chaldeans had taken another side of the wall. The rocks fell to the floor and shook the earth. Zedekiah had not listened to the words of Jeremiah and raised his sword against the Chaldeans. However, he was met with a force too great to comprehend. Jeremiah watched from a distance as Zedekiah's army retreated to the palace gardens. One by one, they were picked off. Spears were driven through their hearts and their heads were put on pikes. Tears streamed down Jeremiah's face as he watched King Zedekiah beg for mercy. The king was beaten, bound, and sent off to Babylon. Jeremiah sat in his room and waited. He knew it was only a matter of time before the Babylonian commanders stormed the courthouse in search of wealth. The captain of Babylonian guard, Nebuzaradan, had his men search the courthouse. They took captives, gold, silver, and precious documents. They scoured every room and closet until it was empty. Jeremiah's door burst open, and he was drug out into the courtyard before Nebuzaradan. Jeremiah leaned in to receive another beating. However, he was met with a warmness from the captain. King Nebuchadnezzar had heard of Jeremiah. He heard of his warnings to the people of Judah and took pity on Jeremiah for being a messenger of reason. Although Babylon was evil, there was a glimmer of mercy in their actions towards Jeremiah. He was given food, water, and a bodyguard to escort him back to his home. He was also offered a place beside Nebuzaradan. Jeremiah had a privilege no one else in Judah had. A choice. A choice to remain with his people or live in the comforts of Babylon. With that freedom, he chose to dwell among the remaining inhabitants of Judah. There he cared for them in his old age and helped them pursue God despite their suffering. As Jeremiah looked into the distance, he could see a pillar of flames where the temple was being burned. Everyone watched in sorrow as the temple crumbled. Jeremiah's heart swelled with sadness. He did not turn his eyes from the temple. As he stared out at the distance, he remembered the image God showed him of the potter and clay. The old pot was broken so a new one could emerge more beautiful. Out of death would come new life. This was the rhythm of creation. This was the way of the Lord. As we begin today's reading, Jeremiah is confined to Zedekiah's courthouse while the king and his armies try in vain to hold off the assault of Nebuchadnezzar's forces. But at last, the Chaldeans broke through the walls and the Babylonian king entered the land, headed for Jerusalem and King Zedekiah. Judah was in ruins. Cities set ablaze as the Chaldeans marched through, taking and doing whatever they pleased. And so in this context, the Lord spoke one day to Jeremiah. This time, the message was not for Zedekiah or the people of Judah. It was for Jeremiah himself. God told him his uncle, Hanamel, was going to come to him desperate and try to sell his land to Jeremiah. His property had no value, as the Babylonians had taken that part of Judah. This wasn't an investment opportunity for Jeremiah. It was a sacrifice. Buying the land from Hanamel would take an enormous burden off the shoulders of his uncle and rescue him from certain slavery. Jeremiah was faithful to the Lord's will and bought the land. It was a redemptive act that gave Hanamel a freedom he had done nothing to earn and had no hope to attain on his own. Through Jeremiah's sacrifice, God was showing his people what he would do for them and for us, paying the price for our freedom. It is an act of pure grace. The battle continued with Zedekiah and his forces fighting in futility against Babylon. Jeremiah watched in horror and grief as his homeland was destroyed. 
the dead bodies piling up left and right, and he wept for Judah. God spoke to him again with words of hope. Listen to God's promise found in Jeremiah 33, verses 6 through 8. Behold, I will bring it to health and healing, and I will heal them and reveal to them abundance of prosperity and security. I will restore the fortunes of Judah and the fortunes of Israel and rebuild them as they were at first. I will cleanse them from all the guilt of their sin against me, and I will forgive all the guilt of their sin and rebellion against me. This is a tremendous promise from God's Word to all of us. When we confess our sins, turn our hearts to Him, even in the most challenging moments, His faithfulness, His goodness, all His promises are there to strengthen and help us and to encourage us, and yes, forgive us when we need forgiveness. God reminds Jeremiah and all of us that when we face adverse circumstances, God can use these things to cleanse us of our sin and our rebellion against Him. So Jeremiah continued to do what God called him to do. And today we heard how yet again those who didn't want to hear of condemnation and judgment sought to take Jeremiah's life. He was seized and thrown into a cistern. But at the last moment, God sent a man to rescue him. We then hear an earnest conversation between Jeremiah and a weary king, Zedekiah. The arrogance and anger of the king seem broken, replaced by fear of what would happen to him. Jeremiah came to him as a caring shepherd and a wise counselor, urging this man to surrender as much to God's will as to the Babylonians. But Zedekiah doesn't listen to the last warning and continues to flee and fight until one by one his men are killed, along with his sons, slaughtered right before his eyes. Zedekiah's eyes are gouged out, and he is taken away in captivity to Babylon. Such a tragic, sad ending that could have been avoided if only Zedekiah had listened to God's warnings. As for Jeremiah, he obeyed and found mercy in the sight of the Lord, even kindness by the Babylonian commander. He is given a choice to go to Babylon, to live in comfort, or to stay with his people. Jeremiah chooses to remain in Judah, to serve his people, even as Jerusalem and God's temple crumble to the ground. But this man of God knows that the Lord one day will make all things new, because our God is always faithful to his word, and his goodness and mercy is eternal. Let's pray. Lord God, may we always listen and obey you. May we always do your will and trust you. And when we disobey, may we find forgiveness as we confess our sins. Lord, we thank you for the story of Jeremiah and this man of God who was faithful to you all the days of his life. May we also live in commitment and consecration to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to today's Bible in a Year podcast. I'm Pastor Jack Graham from Dallas, Texas. Let me encourage you to download the Pray.com app and always make Bible reading and Bible study a priority in your life, along with prayer. If you enjoyed this podcast, share it with someone you love. Let someone know, because by sharing this podcast, you can truly make a difference in someone's life. And if you want more resources from me, Jack Graham, as to how you can grow in your Christian life, then go to jackgraham.org. That's jackgraham.org. God bless you. This episode is sponsored by MediShare, an innovative healthcare solution for Christians to save money without sacrificing quality.